Hi, I'm Nancy with Real Mom Real Solutions. I am a mother of 17 kids, 12 of which live with me. The other five have married and moved out. I have eight grandkids who come to visit really often, so we have a very full house. I am here to share my experiences and life hacks that I have learned throughout the years that I have found that helps my family in hopes that I can help others. Right now, we are working on having a self-cleaning house, and we have been having awesome results. We've had huge breakthroughs and I'm really excited to share everything with you. So it is going to take several videos to go through all of the different things that we have implemented and the changes that we have made to get the results that we have. So stay tuned for future videos. In this video, I'm going to focus on what we did to instill in our kids obedience and helping them to have the desire to please. So before we get into this though, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. In order to create a desire to please in the kids' hearts, we realized that we needed to create a positive experience and making it fun and exciting, um, especially learning something new and also even a way to track their progress and so they could see that they were progressing and doing better. So we actually learned this by training dogs. Early on in our marriage we decided to get a German Shepherd. We hired a guy to come out and train her for us and the guy used correctional training where you pop the leash when you want to correct the dog or when it does something wrong. It took the guy quite a while to get her all the way trained. It was quite expensive so uh, we ended up getting a second dog after that one was all trained which was also a German Shepherd and we decided we was going to try to train the second one ourselves. So my husband looked up online some of the different uh, training things and he found some videos that used positive reinforcement. So it used like treats and praise. So we started doing it that way and it, we got that dog trained so much faster than the first one. And it was actually fun to go out and train the dog. And the dog enjoyed it and we enjoyed it. And it was just so much nicer. And we thought it makes a lot of sense, especially when we're trying to introduce something new to the kids. We try to really focus a lot on like positive reinforcement, positive rewarding, and, and a lot of praise. There are so many times that I've seen people make the mistake of focusing a lot more on punishment instead of rewarding or praise. But rewarding is a hundred times faster and it's so much nicer. Everyone is happy and enjoys it. Ultimately, then you don't have to do a reward forever as far as like a physical prize. Uh, just the praise a lot of times is enough. In fact, a lot of times the kids will want that praise even more than the actual physical prize. But the physical prize too is kind of a way of measuring you know, and you keep track so that you can see their progress and different things like that. But um, depending on how you do it and also depending on each one of the kids, every kid kind of takes things differently. Some of them really enjoys gifts. Some of them really enjoys praise. Some of them really enjoys big hug. You know, so you kind of have to learn your own kid's love language, I guess. So ultimately in the end, a praise will be enough and you won't have to do prizes forever. However, because we use our reward system to encourage talent development, we actually are planning on continuing it for quite a while. So the first step in having a self-cleaning house was to give the kids a clear vision of what we expected. And one of the first parts of our vision was we wanted the kids to be obedient and have a desire to please. We have three different areas that our kids have responsibilities in. So they have their home job or their zone that they are contributing to the household. And then they have their personal stewardship, which is like their bedroom, their laundry, their personal um, things. And then they also have homework. And we wanted each of those things to get done without us having to tell them to do it. So the first step of obedience is doing what you're told the first time. And with a smile, be happy when you're doing it, you know, to not complain and whatever. But we wanted our kids to do the next level above that, which is doing what you know you're supposed to do without having to be told. So first of all, we had to give them this vision. We had to let them know what was expected and that we wanted them to do their responsibilities automatically. They knew that they were expected to do them every day and we didn't want to have to tell them. Part of making that very clear to them was letting them know 
a timeline. When was it expected to be done? And we realized that we had to give them the freedom to have time to actually do it on their own without being told. So the minute that we get home from school, if we're start nagging them automatically, go do your homework, go do your job, go get your stuff done, they don't even have a chance to, to do what they know is supposed to happen without being told because you're automatically telling them, go do it, go do it, go do it. So we felt like we needed to give them time to have the freedom to do it without being told, if that makes sense. So as soon as their kids get home from school, then they have a little bit of time where they can kind of unwind, take care of their backpacks and their coats and whatever they might have, and get a snack or whatever they need to do to kind of unwind a little bit. Then we give them the freedom to choose what they do. We don't have them do it in any certain order. They don't have to do their job first, or they don't have to do their homework first. They don't have to do anything first. It is up to them, and mainly because sometimes they will have a big project due at school, and it's gonna take a good part of their night, and they know they need to get started on it right away. Or maybe it's their night to do their laundry, and laundry takes a little while, so they know they need to get it in the wash, and then while it's washing, they can do some of their other jobs, or whatever it might be. So we let them choose what they are going to do first. We don't make them do anything, particularly when they get home. However, they cannot use their free time until they are done with their responsibilities. So when they get home from school, if they automatically start to play or play games or, or watch TV or whatever, then we do ask them, are you on level two? And we call it level two when they are done with all of their responsibilities. And if they say, no, we're not on level two, then I say, oh, you need to go get your stuff done then. So that would be a reminder, but I don't remind them right off the bat. I give them the chance to go and get started on their own. And then if they start to play, then we remind them. But again, I don't decide what they do. I let them decide what they do. As the kids do their responsibilities throughout the day, then they check them off using the skylight calendar. So this is our skylight calendar. So we're in the chores tab right here. You can put all of your kids in here and you can scan through to all of them. And then you can decide what chores each one of them have. So we have three main responsibilities for each of the kids, which is their zone, bedroom, and homework. We have zone listed as one, bedroom as two, and homework as three. We have on here additional things to remind them that they need to do those items in order to be completely done with their responsibilities. So for example, in order to do their zone, they have to make sure that they clean up after themselves after breakfast, and they have a meal clean up after dinner. And I don't have a lunch one on here because during the week they're at school. And then they have to empty their bin she also has to help one of the younger kids empty their bin that shares a room with her. So it says empty yours and Portia's bin. And Portia is supposed to help empty her bin, but she just guides her through it and makes sure that she does it right instead of just messing up their bedroom. And then they have to keep their zone clean all the way till the end of the day because a lot of times they will clean their job early in the day and then it'll get messy and we don't want to go to bed with a messy house. Um, so they, it has to be clean at the end of the day as well. And then to be able to check off that they have completed their bedroom responsibilities, the girls share a bathroom and then the boys share a bathroom that's next to their bedrooms. And each one of the kids have their own job in their bathroom that's just pertaining to their bathroom, not the family bathroom or the community bathroom. So in order for their bedroom job to be completed, they have to have that small part of their bathroom job done as well. And then they also have to have their bedroom done as well as their laundry. Now their laundry is only posted on their laundry day. So Monday is not her laundry day. I believe it's Juliet's. So we're gonna come over to Juliet and we can go up to her bedroom and it says to do yours and Nancy's laundry. So Nancy is one of the younger kids that shares a bedroom with her. And so she's responsible to make sure that hers and Nancy's laundry both gets done. Nancy will ha help her put her own laundry away but she's responsible to make sure that it gets washed and, and that it actually happens. So each one of the kids will have a certain day that they have their laundry, but that's included in their bedroom. And then the last responsibility is homework. And in my kids' school, then the older kids have Alex and the younger kids have IXL that they do. And it's like uh, an extra practice math 
that they do on top of their regular homework. So I have that listed under their homework. And then they also have um, scripture study or their Sunday school homework or whatever. And then the fourth thing is to uh, practice time and developing a talent. And this is something that they do not have to get done as far as responsibilities, but it is something that they have to do before they can have free time as far as movies or video games on the weekends. Practice time or developing talent time can be even things like riding bikes, playing a sport, playing a musical instrument. <laughs> modeling is pretty much anything but movies or video games. So now I'll just check a couple of her items off to show you. So it says she has got one out of 11 complete and then it moves it to the bottom of her list. So it just tells her everything that she needs to get done today. So as she checks it off, now she's got two out of 11 done. So she'll finish this one anyway and you it just moves them to the bottom. So now if I go through and I check and I say, hey, wait, your job isn't completed, I can uncheck it and it goes back up to the top and it's no longer checked off. So you can check them off and uncheck them very easily. So they can be customized to each person. So for example, Eldon's job is to do the garbages. So we'll go over to Wednesday he has to put the cans out. So it'll have zone and it'll say, take the cans out to the road. That's just a reminder to him to make sure that it happens that day. And then Thursday, we'll actually say to bring the cans in from the road. So you can customize it for each one of the kids. So now we're gonna go back to today. So a nice thing about it is if you realize a kid has a project due or a test coming up in school, you can add a reminder task for them to do that along with their regular homework. So I have the same app on my phone and so I can update it on my phone and it actually updates it on here as well. So you don't have to be home to even update it. You can update it anytime, anywhere. And so I can add a task or take a task off at any of the, for any of the kids at any time, which is really nice. Another thing that I really like about this is the photos option. I can actually use this for my training. So when we train the kids to do a job, then I go through and I demonstrate it for them. And when I do that, then I actually video it and then I edit and create a training video. I only have two posted on here right now because I'm still in the process of compiling all of them. Um, so some of them are still being edited. But for example, this is the bathroom. When you go into it, then it is a video of how to clean the bathroom. Step one, put any rug, towels, rags, shower curtain. Whatever is dirty and needs to be washed, put it in the washer. On your shower curtain, that's something you will not do every week unless needed. Set a timer for the amount of time the washer is supposed to take so you can remember to put them in the dryer before you're finished cleaning the bathroom. Step two, clean and sweep the floor. Move the garbage can out of the corner so you can clean behind it. Make sure you gather anything from any corners and especially under the cabinet, behind the door, anywhere where items can hide. When sweeping the floor, make sure you do the corners behind the door and all around the toilet, including behind it. To see the full training video or to use it or any other training videos to train your kids on cleaning, links will be posted in the description below. You can choose what videos or what pictures you have on your calendar. It's not linked to your other skylight frames that you might have. So you can decide what you put on each frame. So on this, I only have my cleaning videos and eventually I'm going to put on here recipe videos as well. So the kids that are learning to cook can make meals by watching the videos. But that will be the only things that I have on this so that the kids are not tempted to just play on it and look through the photos and things. It'll be used for training purposes only. And then there's also an option to do lists. So I have all these different lists on mine. I have all the things that need to be painted and touched up around the house, house maintenance, 
outdoor repairs and maintenance, house projects, and extra jobs. So you can put on there your grocery list or whatever you want. Like I said, this is connected to your phone as well. So you can update it at any time and then the kids can also see it. So if my kids are trying to earn something extra that they want to earn faster than they can with our regular reward system, then they could do an extra job to earn it faster. So they would just click on the extra jobs to see what extra jobs might be available for them to do. And I have all extra jobs, including ones that I need to do myself on here. But anyways, you can have whatever list that you want on here. And then, hence the name of the device, the Skylight Calendar, you can also sync your calendar to this, whether you have an Apple or an Android or whatever it might be. You can choose which calendars you share, so you can make one specific to the family that has things on there that pertain to the kids, like upcoming appointments for them, or events for school, or family activities you may have planned, or whatever you want them to know is coming up. I have an alarm set on my phone for 7 o'clock and at 7 o'clock then their stuff needs to be started or done by that time or else that is when I will remind them and I will tell them to do it. And so when that time comes then we get them all gathered up and we say, okay, if you have not started on your job or your homework or your whatever, then it is time to get started on it. You have to start on it now. And at that point I do make them all do their household jobs because they have had those three hours of being home and they which has been plenty of time to get all their stuff done so if they have not gotten it done at that point then I say okay you have to do your job now and our jobs are not that difficult because at this point we have put some different things in place and I'll talk to you about those in, in future videos that have made so the house stays clean. It, you know, there's things are picked up off the floor, the counters are always cleaned off, the sink is always empty on the dishes and it's relatively, it's straightened, I should say. So it's not clean because, you know, no one has washed off the counters or swept the floors. That's what their job is for. That's what they do. And then once they are finished with their job, then they can continue on with their homework or their bedroom or their laundry or whatever else needs to be done and of course if they are already done with their stuff like a lot of them actually are then it's just free time and they can go do whatever they would like to do except for video games we don't allow video games during the week um, those are weekend only and I'll get into that on another video of how we manage our video game time I have another alarm set on my phone at 8 o'clock and when that alarm goes off we go in the kitchen and we have a stand-up meeting and we all um, gather around this chart. It has all of the kids' names across the top of the board and then each, under each kid's name has their zone, their bedroom, and their homework responsibility. So that's the option for each one of the kids. And then the date is across the side over here. Um, and then each week has a total column, sorry, a weekly total and then a total, or like a running total. And right before we go through this, I quickly do a walkthrough of the house and I kind of, and I check um, each of the bedrooms and the jobs and whatever so that I know what's actually done and not. Um, and the kids have also checked off their jobs on the skylight calendar as they completed them. So I can refer to that as well. But I still want to physically look at them and make sure that they actually did them and did them correctly. So I do a quick walkthrough of the house right before I come and do the stand-up meeting with the kids. Um, and then I go through and we say, okay, did you do your zone without being told? Did you do your bedroom without being told? Did you do homework without being told? Um, and if they did it without being told, they get a gold X. Um, and if they had to be told to do it, then they get a silver X if it's complete. If it is not complete, then it is left blank. Now you'll probably notice we have a few zeros on here or the circles. And the circles are if it was not required that day. So a lot of times on Saturdays, then they will not have homework. Some of the older kids might have it because they'll have projects that they have to do over the weekend or whatever. But if they do not have requ required homework, it's just um, I put a zero or an O just so that we know that it wasn't that they didn't get it done. Um, they just didn't have any. It wasn't required. But I don't want to give them an X for it because they didn't actually do it. Um, and each one of these X's actually have a value and they get rewards for it. So as you can see, the kids don't do everything perfectly, but they do a pretty good job. And there's a lot of gold X's on here, which has been really, really nice. I haven't had to even tell the kids to do their jobs 
or their bedrooms and their laundry and the different things. So it's been awesome. But some of the kids do need more reminding than others. But that's when we make, I make sure that I praise them really a lot. And I say, okay, awesome, good job. You got your zone done without being told, your bedroom and your homework. That is so nice. Thank you for doing that. That makes it so much easier. I really appreciate it. And we kind of praise them. The kids that don't get their stuff done, we just kind of leave it at that. So you say, oh, you didn't get your bedroom done? Okay, well, maybe tomorrow. And, and we kind of, um, and, and sometimes we'll even say, is there a reason what's stopping you from doing it? Because uh, sometimes either, you know, they might have some, some obstacle or something in the way of why they're not being able to get it done. Every single day I make sure that I do this stand-up meeting because I've noticed that if I slack at all, if I have days when I don't do it, then the kids start to lose um, the excitement and they start to lose kind of faith that we're going to actually give them that reward or that, you know, that it, what they're doing is getting them anywhere. So at the end of the week on Saturdays, then we go through and we add up all of the X's. So we add up all of the gold X's and put a number and we add up all the silver X's and put a number on each one of the kids' things. And then after we have them all added up, then we turn that into a dollar value. And for us, every gold X, we give them a dollar, and every silver X, we give them 50 cents. And you could do whatever works for your family. It's actually a pretty high amount. And the reason why we did that is because we were pushing our kids to earn some pretty big prizes because we wanted them to um, uh, develop their talents and the ideas and things that we were giving them were kind of more expensive. And so we had to make it to where they could actually get those items anyways but you you can have that value be whatever you want it to be so after we tally those up then we uh, add up their the dollar value now you'll probably notice that so he had nine nine gold and three silver so that should have just right there should have been ten dollars and fifty cents and we have 1105 so it's because he had a running value that he was saving up from the past month or the past time period they can save up their money and um, add it up until they get enough money to purchase what they want to purchase but then they might buy something so we'll add it up and their total might be like 27 dollars and then they buy something on saturday because saturday is also our store so we add everything up we give them what their value is right now and we do our store where we let them purchase the items um, usually it's just online but um, that's the day that they get to cash out or, or get their prizes and we also give them the option of each, each one of the kids also has a savings account set up and we do give them the option of just simply turning the money into their savings account if they want to as well they don't have to purchase a prize with it but the prizes that they can purchase do have to be something that will help to develop talents or skills. So um, basically anything but video games. We do not let them get anything to do with video games on this. But that's a very wide variety of things. Like we've had the kids get remote control cars and remote control snakes and centipedes and all sorts of weird things. Four square balls or basketballs or, or mitts and, and you know stuff for sports or uh, they can get um, if, a new bike if they're trying to get a bike, a drone if they want to learn how to, uh, to fly drones and do the videos and stuff like that. That's actually one of the things we was kind of pushing them toward learning. Anyway, so it's kind of more of an expensive item. And um, one of our kids is really getting into 3D modeling. So he gets like, he you know purchases the resin and um, the supplies and stuff to build what he's building. He's actually building a guitar right now, which is awesome. Um, so he's been getting like the electrical parts for the guitar and the strings and all the different things. They can purchase anything that will help them to develop skills or talents. And some of the younger kids, like especially Portia and Nancy and Beckett and Archer, I don't even have on here because, you know, they're one years old and a baby. Anyways, but um, these guys are three and four years old and they, uh, so they don't have a set zone job in the house. So that's why that one's basically always empty. I have it on here because as they get a little bit older, they will eventually have one, um, but they don't really have one. So I guess they should have zeros right there. But So they share a bedroom with one of their older sisters. And so if they help them to clean it, then they get an X. 
But if they don't help, then they don't get an X because they didn't earn it. Anyway, so some of the days they help and some of the days they don't because the older one just, I guess, gets sick of waiting for them or whatever. Anyways, and then same with their homework. Um, like Nancy isn't even in school yet, so she doesn't have any homework. They can't earn X's quite as as easily as the other kids and they don't really understand this as well. So we actually are doing a little bit of a different program with them. So for my one, three and four year old, we actually do pom-poms. The white pom-poms are actually something separate, so I'm not gonna talk about those right now. But the colored pom-poms are something that they can earn by doing simple tasks around the house. So even something as simple as when you ask them, okay, go put this in the garbage or put this in the dirty clothes or when they help you put their clothes away, um, or just any simple task that you might give them, then they can go and choose a whatever color pom-pom they want and put it in their jar. And then when their pom-poms get up to a certain line, uh, then you could take them to get a prize at the store. Or you could also do it to where, uh, just depending on how many pom-poms they have, like, you know, every five pom-poms equals a dollar or whatever it works for you. Um, anyway, but the easiest thing when you take them to a store is to take them to a store that has a limit on the amount. So maybe go to five and below or a dollar store or something to where they can kind of just choose whatever they want in the store and and you don't necessarily have to worry about the, the price of the item just because at that age they don't quite understand. Um, but the older one, the four-year-old, would probably understand and you could explain it to her at that age. But depending on the kid, sometimes it's just easier to to just let them choose anything in the store and go to the right kind of store. So we have a lot more videos coming and we'll show you all the different things that we've implemented to make our house a self-cleaning house. Again, like I've said, we've had tremendous success with this and it's been really exciting. So stay tuned for more videos. In fact, we've been able to get our dishes to where our sink is always empty and our dishes are always caught up, which is amazing for us. Like I didn't even think that that would ever be possible. So stay tuned for the video of how we did that along with many more. And thank you for watching.